Hello, everybody. Hey, welcome back. Um, and we stay right on track, so to say, with the infrastructure and nerdy topics. We did talk about uh, SaaS infrastructure. We're now moving on to high availability in, in general. And our guests here are Peter and Jordan, if I'm not mistaken. Should be Jordan, Jordan and Lakshmi. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm confused. OK. OK, Jordan Lakshmi. Um, so I guess it's best you both introduce yourself, but I want, would uh, want to advise everybody that we're following this session with a panel on the same topic with even more people. So get yourself enough beverages for a full two hours of high availability. High <laughs> wow, my, that's a yeah. HA. <laughs> OK, let's get going. Have fun, guys. Great. Thank you. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining today. I'll go ahead and share my screen, and uh, we can get started on some of the intros. Um, so give me one second. Share. So I believe everyone can see my screen. Lakshmi, we good? Yeah. Great. Um, hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us today to discuss high availability modic. Um, as a quick intro, uh, this is very much a business level conversation. It is going to point out some of the resources and um, kind of tools and techniques that you have at your disposal if you want to deploy Modic for the enterprise. Um, we found in our own journey uh, along this path that it was very disjointed. There aren't a lot of people who are uh, doing this in high availability, um, or maybe they are, they just aren't talking about it. And so we wanted to share our experience kind of consolidating all of these things um, and talking about where you can go for, for help. Um, so quickly, a qu uh, an introduction. My name is Jordan Ryan, partner and CTO at Fast Interactive. We've been working in Modic for about three years now, since 2017. And since it's almost 2021, I have to say that's probably about four years now. Um, we lead development and business consulting engagements um, in order to drive revenue streams. Um, Lakshmi is a technical architect with one of our key partners, Accelerant, um, and has been working with us uh, over the past year to work through um, deploying Modic for the enterprise um, and has been leading the efforts for us to Helmize um, Modic for Kubernetes. Um, so throughout this process, as I mentioned, we found that scaling Modic doesn't really have a true playbook. Um, there are a lot of different uh, resources at your disposal, especially with some of the community contributed solutions out there. Um, some of them are infrastructure specific, and we'll talk about that. Um, but we also see the need to kind of unify conversations around scaling Modic for the enterprise and uh, talk about it holistically. So let's get started. Um, so first, in order to ask yourself the question, why deploy Modic in HA, you have to kind of understand where Modic sits, both in the marketplace and as a part of your business. Um, so you might ask yourself, why Modic versus Salesforce, or why Modic versus Pardot or Marketo, um, or any other SaaS solution where there is a marketing automation suite? Well, you know, by participating in the community of Modic, you're participating in uh, a mission of equality. You're trying to help others gain the access to the tools that drive um, business relationships between customers and business entities and help drive personalized relationships so you can have a real um, substantive conversation with uh, prospective customers about things that interest them. Uh, many times, Modic is uh, the, the choice to go with Modic is more price motivated. That's largely due to the fact that in this industry, there is a lot of contact economics, meaning uh, competitive marketing automation solutions charge based on a price per contact. Um, so how many contacts you have in your database? And there are economies of scale when you start to manage your own infrastructure. So you start to pay for these servers and the database size as opposed to the number of contacts in your system. There are some caveats with this. You have to support the infrastructure. 
Um, and finally, the reason why people go with Modic is because they typically break the mold, meaning um, they need to use marketing automation in a way that's non-standard versus other SaaS platform uh, use cases. So companies that have non-standard business models, data governance and custodianship, such as GDPR requirements, integration or security needs, or a high volume of federated brands can quickly realize value with open source Modic. And so at the end of the day, we're talking about cost-effective marketing automation and cost-effective relationship management. In this business, you have to really look at your relationship unit economics. So if you have a, uh, um, a price per contact model, then Modic as a standard for the industry, then Modic breaks the mold with open source Modic deployments. You know, a simple exercise to illustrate this is how many marketing automation suites are affordable up to 10,000 contacts? Well, many have free trials and probably the answer is all of them. All of them are affordable. Um, how many up to 100,000 contacts? Probably a few more. Uh, how many up to a million or above? Well, this is where your assumptions around the profitability of your contacts really gets challenged. And you have to know um, the quality of those contacts in your database in order to truly scale on a SaaS solution based on a price per contact model. If you can drive down the economics of those costs, um, then you can uh, really change the model of how your business operates, track, keeping track of what you might think of as unqualified leads just as much as you keep track of the marketing qualified leads or the sales qualified leads. And so whether or not marketing automation is affordable to you is really a function of your market opportunity uh, for each contact relationship, subtracting your cost to maintain that relationship. So Modic open source helps you to heavily reduce that cost when you're sufficiently large you know, hello enterprise. Um, so an organization that stands to collect a small lifetime value compared to a large cost will never make a profit. And many businesses know that they just can't um, gamble with those numbers. Um, the risks of deploying Modic, um, especially for high availability, you have to understand that it, Modic is a, is a business critical application. While many of us are uh, perhaps well experienced in publishing websites or other kinds of publishing platforms. Um, marketing automation is really the brain of your customer relationship. It needs to be available to track everything. And that means always up and always available for integrations with your tracking pixel load times on your website, email opens and clicks and activity posted by third party APIs, as well as keeping track of those contact behavior uh, engagements from form fills um, and also, you know, it is the uh, locus or the center of your customer journey. So it needs to be able to push information out based on where an individual customer is and personalize that journey. Everyone's familiar with the standard MarTech stack problem. Uh, you have a million different tools and you have to kind of orchestrate the customer journey to be where your customers are. So your customer might be on your Shopify store, your WordPress site, your Drupal site, or any other number of social media platforms. The goal with uh, using Modic as a central integration point is to bridge this gap and centralize communications across these various channels. And once you start to think in those terms, you have to be enterprise ready. You have to set up Modic to be an integral part of your MarTech stack and ensure that it stays up. Driving that cohesive customer journey is critical and you'll miss some opportunities if things start to fall apart. Before we jump into the technicals and uh, definitely just wanna say, um, you know, we're just getting past the business, uh, the business points here. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the technical history. Um, so Modic, if you pay attention to Modic Core, you'll notice that LAMP, LAMP stack has been the kind of tried and true way of deploying Modic. Um, it was originally developed with the intention of a single application instance hosted on LAMP stack. There are certainly ways to scale that um, with Apache. Um, 
And there have been a large number of high availability con contributions on Modic 2, and various contributors have worked on Modic Docker, Elastic Beanstalk, and various pull requests for performance issues, kind of, um, I would say, litter the backlog in the forums at this point. However, the shift to Modic 3 has stalled out the contributions. There's been a lot of uh, con contributor uh, atrophy, um, and there's been a slowdown in the testing for the uh, solutions that have been presented in some pull requests. And so a number of performance tuning optimizations didn't make it in before the Modic 3 update and have since gone dormant in the PR backlog. There, there have been great progress recently. I've noticed that of the Modic core contributors driving um, solutions to get refactored, which has been great. But there is that you have to understand the history of where we're at now. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the solutions that are available in the community. So first and foremost is Modic Docker, um, which is uh, deployed as a single container application. Um, there are some ways that people have attempted to scale this out with a Docker Compose orchestration. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the limitations there on the next slide. Um, the DMS group and Heath Dutton have done a lot of great work in uh, Modic EB, which is an elastic beanstalk distribution of Modic. There are, um, you know, just as a process-driven developer, I would say there have been a lot of great ways that um, Heath and his team have addressed kind of the brittleness of some uh, Modic maintenance tasks. And there is a great plethora of scripts and uh, opinionated ways of maintaining Modic in that project. Um, and then there's also things like templates that are published on Platform SH, where at one click you can deploy a highly available uh, uh, master, master, master deployable version of Modic on their platform. Um, there have been various attempts at Kubernetes, but most of the, these solutions didn't deploy HA best practices with persistent volume caches for multi-pod clusters. And while there are great Helm charts out there for Symfony 4 Plus applications, there aren't that many great solutions for Symfony 2. And Modic 2 has been where we, we did most of our work. Um, some of the dead ends that I just want to call out in the community because I think it's important to uh, address the, the people who contributed towards Modic, deploying Modic in HA. So containerized Modic by AutoEyes was maintained up to 2.10, and that was a Docker composed deployment of Modic Docker. Um, the DMS group is currently up to 2.15.0. I haven't seen anything on Modic 3 yet. Um, it also requires AWS which is a non-starter for some. Some clients that we work with um, ask for on-premises deployments. Some ask for Azure. Um, you know, the ability to pick up Modic and take it anywhere is important. Um, and Modic Docker Compose strategies are, that are built on Modic Docker um, are sometimes brittle without the uh, appropriate container orchestration. So. Um, where you store the application code, is that application code writable when you install plugins? Do you run auto updates? All of those things need to be decided in Modic Docker, which in, in my opinion is not really an enterprise ready solution. It is a uh, figure it out for yourself kind of solution. Um, and there are also some great productized offerings out there by various uh, Modic agencies mentioning deploying with LXC, HA proxy. Um, but there isn't really a tuned uh, high availability distribution that's shared in the same way that, for instance, Modic EB is shared. And so introducing Modic Kubernetes and some of the work that we've done, um, we have taken a lot of the different approaches to Modic and decided to go with a highly scalable deployment of a LEMP stack with Nginx PHP 7.3 and options between MySQL 5.7 and MariaDB, either in the Kubernetes cluster or RDS. Um, we deploy persistent volume caches across the shared spools logs, cache, and media. A lot of this is well documented in some of the other HA um, discussions in the forums, but there isn't, as I mentioned, a definitive documentation for stuff like this. Um, we centralize our logging with EFK stack, Elasticsearch, FluentD, and Kibana, along with some modic custom uh, logging to Docker log to allow for a robust uh, log stream center. 
Um, we manage infrastructure as code using Terraform, provisioning EKS, ECR, ECR, RDS on AWS, and orchestrate our Kubernetes um, with Helm 3 charts to manage uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment with uh, GitLab. Uh, Rabbit MQ is deployed in cluster so that it, it's always highly available for tracking pixel activity for queue management. And we use Redis for high availability sessions that are shared across the cluster uh, for multi-pod pod replica configuration. And finally, one of the most painful things if you've had to deal with it is probably the proxy protocol, which uh, the more layers of uh, proxies that you add, the more painful this gets. And um, you know, we eventually landed on an elastic load balancer solution in AWS with an Nginx proxy ingress and PHP FPM Nginx application um, containers in replica deployment. Um, and all of that is just so that you can get uh, appropriate IP and tracking headers to be passed into the Monic application. So from the points of all those technicals, it's a lot of effort to get Modic to uh, the point where it's deployed as a stateless application. I'd love to be able to say that we can deploy Modic in a 12-factor configuration, but there just aren't things that um, can be done in Modic yet. I think that some of work to improve Modic to make it more stateless or make it capable of being more stateless have been done in Modic 3. Um, but I know that there's still some more work to be done in order to get it more 12 factor. So some of the things that we do out of box is we, in an opinionated way, do not allow any writes to local.php um, and we persist all configuration and parameters local.php, making sure that developers are contributing in such a way so that they're deploying configuration and environment aware configuration with environment variables and um, using things like switch statements and if statements in order to make sure that some things are turned on in certain environments and some things are turned off. Um, we also use programmatic build and deploy of Modic with Composer using a root Composer JSON to define Modic core and third-party plugins. I have to tip my hat to uh, Heath and his team on that one as um, for Modic 2, that has been a great way to get started. Um, with multi-stage environment workflow, there are a number of things in this list that we've implemented and a number of things that are aspirational. Um, we believe that, you know, as a business critical application, the end goal is some roadmap like this. So I'll just talk about that for a minute. Um, you know, with a multi-stage deployment, you want to be able to, um, in the live environment, make sure that your deployments are automated so that they're dependable. Uh, manage your cache, meaning cleaning of your cache, handling any migrations in the database, uh, managing those plugin installs, and obviously all the other, you know, cron and normal application runtime configurations. In a testing environment, we deploy uh, to Kubernetes to make sure that we have our systems integration testing in one place, automating tests with third-party systems, um, which is kind of hub and spoke for most uh, businesses, you can't test everything. You have to test what is necessary and critical. Uh, load testing, which I think that there is some um, opportunity for the community to, to kind of rally around a singular set of load tests for Modic, maybe in the future. Um, validating the deployment steps, which is just rolling it out and doing some functional or regression testing. Um, and then finally, you know, one of the most valuable um, insights throughout our development process is just how much effort it takes to lock down your development and test environments and lower level environments, local development environments, to make sure that developers aren't unnecessarily sending emails to people, um, aren't triggering any events on third party APIs, um, that there are uh, protections using environment aware credentials, and also no access to encrypted um, personally identifiable information, PII. Um, there are a number of other improvements that I'm sure some of you are probably running through in your mind. Um, but these, I think, are the cornerstones of you know, the ways that most enterprises need to operate so that they reduce risk around um, marketing automation deployments. Um, and so finally, the, the promise of what we've been talking about today of you know, uh, while we present 
mod at Kubernetes and, and we'll provide a link to that um, repo, which I have to mea culpa say that it's not published just yet. It'll probably be up in the next week or so. Once I scan and make sure no uh, unnecessarily published credentials are included in the Git history, um, that's the fun of making something open source, right? Got to double check everything. Uh, we have um, we have some just some ideas that we want to share, and maybe this will kick off the final section of questions. Um, we're doing pretty good on time, so I'll just run through this a little uh, reasonable pace. So what can you do to help Modic scale? Um, I think it's important to talk about what are some of the application bottlenecks in the system. Um, first of all, the tracking soul. You know, we see typical load times of 500 milliseconds to one second. Um, a lot of that is mitigated as much as possible by using tools like RabbitMQ or uh, Beanstalk. And so there are potential opportunities to decouple the logging of tracking events to re reduce load. Um, I've talked with even some of the, I think the, some of the other members of the audience about things like uh, AWS serverless lambdas and cloud functions and ways to just um, queue processing of tracking events in a hyperscalable way. Um, there's also consistently a problem with database indexing and managing the size of the database. Certainly the easiest solution is just throw more memory at it, but at some point you have to profile your queries, um, build new indexes, and lots of times that's non-standard to every user that has to be unique to your speci specific, sometimes data model, sometimes your segment filters and your smart lists. Um, and, you know, profiling your system is probably the best way of making sure that you're getting the appropriate database performance. Um, your segment and campaign rebuilds are uh, cron-based. Um, there are, I think, some conversations that are happening around turning those into uh, PHP workers that are just continuously processing data. Um, however, there are some locks in the databases, some contacts get processed. So um, I'm sure that smarter people than I are probably working on that for um, various reasons. Um, there's also you know, a question of how long do you keep activity around each contact. So the tracking lifetime of activity, the data governance in the sense of how long do you keep data before you delete it. Um, and you have to determine, and you know, ideally a number of days, sometimes 365, sometimes 100, how long you're gonna keep that information about each user. Um, it's important in the context of always taking actionable results on your current leads um, it might not be so important to remember that three years ago, somebody opened a particular email. Some organizations want to keep that, but you have to decide for yourself how you're going to maintain that database. <clears throat> um, one of the particular issues that we ran into with one of our enterprise clients was uh, they wanted to use Modic in a... Um, as an email service for all of their other enterprise applications to make sure that all email correspondence was getting logged to the contact. And so in order to fulfill that, um, we needed to be able to prioritize different kinds of emails. So if there was a large batch of email sends for a marketing campaign, prioritizing the transactional API emails over that um, required a little bit of you know, multi-queue operations or prioritization of the queue to stop start different batches of segments or um, batches of campaigns based on type. Um, and finally, for reporting, you know, there's um, non-performant queries, I would say, at large data sets. Um, if you run into any of these issues, there's a lot of, you know, spot solutions throughout uh, modic issue queues, pull requests. Again, this is where I've most um, frequently seen um, Heath Dutton's contributions around tuning the database. And these all seem very particular to people who have large data sets. But I asked the question of, aren't there solutions that can be turned into more of a runbook or a playbook for um, more of the open source community that's addressing this? Um, 
certainly I think that there's an opportunity for a modic load model that's kind of universal to all members in the open source community. There are, um, there's a need to exercise the tracking pixel and the email event tracking and queuing up the load model. Uh, I'm sorry, the queue load model, which is how much, um, how much data is going into the spool um, or how much transactional email is getting processed. There's certainly, you know, throughput issues on third party APIs with things like Twilio and, you know, response times from those third party APIs can impact your server. Um, there's really a need to have a uh, developer toolkit for load testing as Modic becomes more enterprise. Um, some of the solutions in here, we've written some basic scripts in order to exercise, and some we plan to write um, for an upcoming engagement fairly soon. So we hope to contribute that and uh, participate with others who have ideas around this load modeling um, strategy. Um, if you want to help, definitely one of the best ways is to jump into some of the scalability issues that are in the uh, core uh, GitHub project. And so Modic Core has a number of issues such as using RabbitMQ to send emails to scale emails out instead of using something like uh, the spool as a shared space, um, shared PVC. The email stats table, which I know for some of you was a recent conversation in the uh, the product channel of the Modic Slack community. Um, there's been ongoing work in the Redis um, with implementing Redis as a cache bundle. Um, we're very excited to test that. Um, some work was done in Modic 2, and it's been refactored for Modic 3. Um, and then there's an open issue for campaign summary statistics, which I think is kind of one of those examples of something that is beneficial for a lot of people, but uh, potentially withering on the vine because it's not yet refactored for Modic 3. Um, one of the new improvements by the way that issues and pull requests are being organized by the uh, product team is that the performance and scalability tag is now being used in Modic Core. So if you want to jump in on some of these issues or you want to be aware of some of these issues, you can go ahead and hit that link and you can check out some of the issues in the backlog. So um, aspirational improvements, these are not performance related, but you can think of them as um, kind of enterprise ready development workflow um, desirables. So there is a question of, is there a best practice or a standardized way of backfilling between environments? Uh, I think we'd love to see a community supported way of automating database operations between environments and cleaning up certain data sets or being able to define and configure that cleanup um, as opposed to what we're doing now, which is some of our own scripted um, scripted cleanup of database uh, data. Managing configuration for plugins as code uh, to making, su making sure that all plugins have a way of specifying in, thing in uh, parameters local.php and an environment aware uh, configuration. Um, and deployment of campaigns and content. Content. I know that there is a, um, you know, there are great paid solutions like Acquia's uh, Modic Maestro. Um, I've asked this question before, but how will the open source community drive forward a solution? I think that there needs to be an effort to export, um, you know, all kinds of items, all kinds of content, whether that's um, campaign content or email content. Uh, as code and or be able to transport it between different applications. Um, this is the best way to be enterprise ready, to track um, content changes, which are really email changes in some cases for some, I guess, qualified, um, maybe tokenized emails that are used by transactional APIs and other, other systems that you don't wanna just quote unquote leave to the database to control it. Um, and there's probably some others that we're not thinking of, but these are the ones that come to mind for us and some of the struggles that we've had. And, you know, we build workarounds, but there, there are opportunities to collaborate and improve uh, holistically. And so with that, um, I want to turn things back over to uh, Eki to please ask us some questions. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that... Um, 
I can actually see the questions come in and, and Lakshmi is available for any technical sided questions. I'm available for more of the strategic questions. And um, thanks everyone for uh, tuning in. Yeah, thanks folks. Wow, for a business level talk, that was very, let's say, specific. <laughs> yeah, very specific. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, not too many questions so far. I'd like to start with actually a uh, uh, high level question. What is a strong enterprise or HA Mordic implementation mean for the users? So for uh, if we assume that the users are the customers that are visiting a website, um, some of the things that we noticed have been if you have Modic that is um, in stress, you know, under duress because you have a traffic spike, um, your tracking pixel will slow down and it won't load very quickly, and that could impact your page speed scores, your Google page speed scores, and your front end user experience, where your site will keep spinning. You can protect yourself from that with Google Tag Manager and some deferred asynchronous loading, but uh, it never looks good when you get that 404 or um, timeout for yourself. Uh, in short, uh, a good high availability Matic ensures that users never see it. In yeah, yeah, shouldn't see it. They shouldn't know it's there. <laughs> Just works. OK, yeah, exactly. uh, another one. Oh, OK, that's quite a while ago, that slide. What do you mean by proxy protocol, and what is so hard about it? OK, so proxy protocol, if you start getting into deploying in high availability, there is a protocol for uh, load balancers that um, essentially allow headers at the highest level. So the identification of an end client IP, a user IP, to be passed forward. And when you deploy in high availability, um, these layers of proxies all have to talk to each other, meaning all of the headers have to pass into from the highest level proxy for you that might be Cloudflare, that might be ELB. That all needs to come all the way into the modic application layer. And um, if you don't do that just right, it can be a very painful thing to debug. Is is why is why I said that it, it you know <laughs> it's painful. Um, yeah, Lakshmi, do you have anything? In, in, in all those layers that you have. Yeah, uh, yeah it is. It, uh, it is a topic which is worth its own talk actually. Yeah. So there are so many configurations which can go wrong, and it's very hard to nail the one which works perfectly. So we had to do that after a lot of trial and error. Yeah, Lakshmi, do you want to talk at all about some of the the pain that we had with um, early days of traffic versus Nginx and what we saw there. Yeah, uh, so uh, in a typical uh, managed Kubernetes setup, uh, an incoming request goes through a lot of hoops. It starts with uh, your external uh, uh, user-facing load balancer, followed by uh, the Kubernetes ingress controller, and then uh, your application Nginx. And then the last leg is uh, the Motic uh, PHP FPM process itself. So um, initially, we were uh, not getting any anonymous IPs, and uh, hence we are not able to track uh, the activity of anonymous contacts, which was a sort of deal breaker for. Uh, the exact issue is. And uh, the fact that we were using a non-standard traffic ingress controller, which is uh, a lot less documented uh, in the community, uh, you know, mm -hmm. compounded this uh, whole problem, and we have to run through a lot of uh, you know false positives just before uh, we solved the problem and nailed it. Right. So if I could echo that, a lot of our struggle from a strategic implementation perspective, we went with what is trusted in the. Kubernetes community, which is traffic ingress controller. And um, that just turned out to be pretty much unsolvable for us to get the appropriate header configuration with our Nginx application um, containers in behind the traffic ingress controller. We ended up refactoring to Nginx proxy, which gave us a lot more control over those PHP FPM connections, um, which I think people who know PHP FPM 
and nginx they're built to work together traffic actually there is an open issue you cannot do php fpm proxy connections from traffic it's it's not supported at all um yeah i would like Other questions a, i would li like a question from my side because i'm curious mm -hmm. um when you started off with, i mean or, or the other way around you are using all the latest and greatest uh in the infrastructure world uh when you started this project um what was your background uh, did you have any experience in all that or or is basically lakshmi bringing the experience in or or how did it work that's oh, lakshmi i had a little bit of uh, experience in uh, kubernetes and in Motic. we just married both we thought it's a good match potentially mm -hmm. so yeah. kubernetes is a least common denominator platform it is available everywhere uh, both in public cloud as well as in private premises and uh, it can give you the guarantee that the application is always highly available. So uh, it was sort of like addressing uh, the exact concerns which we had around uh, high availability modules. So we just went with both. Yeah. And uh, to, to add to a uh, motivator for that, we didn't really, we weren't really given a choice on the first, the first time we took a crack at this. The client came in and said, hey, we're running this on Kubernetes. Can you deploy it there for us? And we said, OK. Sure. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, you see, I, I see you also use terraforming, for instance. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't think that's for everybody, but I'm sure it makes sense in your case. Eh? We we are actually going to be publishing our terraform templates as well uh, as a separate repo. They're not really maintained together. It's not a part of the modic. So what you normally need to do is you deploy the infrastructure as code. And then the Modic project on Kubernetes exercises those resources, um, but it, it's a uh, those Terraform templates are built for AWS at this point. But I can imagine us giving better interoperability between different cloud platform providers, as maybe other people want to participate in the community and get um, the Kubernetes Modic up on maybe Google Cloud Platform or, or an equivalent. Uh, here's a different type of question. I don't. Mm -hmm. I, I leave it to you to answer it or not. And the question is, how do you see the current pandemic affecting Mortic's market? It's a great question. Um, that might be a key question to our business strategy right now. So mm -hmm. we we actively reach out to uh, directors of marketing, um, and we know that different kinds of businesses are tightening their belts. We definitely get interest in uh, or from enterprises that are looking to save money. Um, there is a little bit of a trade-off between, you know, switching from a Marketo to a Modic, and you have to educate the client as to what that trade-off is. But in many cases, if you're sufficiently large enough, meaning you have enough site traffic, you have enough contacts, and um, you have the right business model, there's um, there's significant opportunity. Uh, I personally believe that there are industry segments that are heretofore unserviced because a Marketo solution or a Pardot or even a HubSpot solution is just too expensive. Um, here's one that I don't expect to get into soon, so I'll just give it away, which is uh, politics. You know, po politicians maintain large databases of potential contacts of potential donors, and it's beneficial to keep track of all of their engagement, but the cost of those individuals is a lot lower, much, I mean, not cost, the value is a lot lower because who knows when they'll donate. Yeah. So um, maintaining that highly scalable database in a way that's gonna be as cost effective as possible is maybe more critical to those kinds of business models where you're not quite sure how much is this person worth to me yet. Yeah. Yeah, good point. After all, it's it's really two questions that you have to answer for yourself. One is where is marketing automation going these mm -hmm. days? And the other is what is Modic's share of that going to be? Mm -hmm. And uh, at least the second thing is, is something that we can influence. And uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great point. I think that um, there certainly is a tidal wave. I mean, if you pay attention to the stock price of Shopify, 
this is a great this is a great way to, to determine how much is e-commerce growing well a lot of people have signed up for shopify over the past few quarters as more small businesses are rolled out um, so the appropriate tools to kind of orchestrate those journeys is more critical than ever and i could see modic being at a opportune turning point kind of positioned at an opportune turning point for small businesses but um you know the the highly uh highly available versus you know the right size for small businesses don't really marry itself to each other so um we probably don't have a solution for them but certainly there are some great solutions out there for small businesses who need this okie dokie before we turn this into a panel, I would rather point everybody to the actual panel that's coming up in 17 minutes from now. Great. Um, it's called a panel on high availability. And we see you, Jordan, again. Yeah. Uh, and two other brilliant people. That's Nick Fenhof and Heath Dutton. Yep. Uh, we got to get one brilliant mind go. That's Lakshmi. So yeah, we're going to. Thank gonna... you very much. I think we're going to take a break too for a little bit, right? We got a few minutes before we start. Exactly. We got 15 minutes or so. Okay. Um, left. And uh, so stay tuned. See you all in 15 minutes from here. And it's going to be an interesting discussion for sure. So, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. See you.